been dealt. Anybody 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 been To God be the glory, honor, and praise for our being here tonight to our evangelist. We God lead him as he comes in his own way by saying amen. amen. God be the glory for the things that he has done. Good evening to our honored and esteemed pastor, friend, and brother, Pastor Ricks, and to all of these pastors who graced the rocks from tonight. Glad to see our moderator here tonight. And to all of these brothers who graced the rocks from tonight, and to you, my brothers and sisters, it's a great day to be alive. Somebody ought to thank the Lord that I'm on top of the ground, and the ground is not on top of me. And for that, we ought to be thankful. On this Wednesday night, we are grateful to God to be in the house of the Lord. And I asked you on last night, uh, you had an assignment, and that was to go and encourage somebody in your house and encourage folk today. And I hope you have done so. And tonight, I'd ask that uh, we would encourage our leader. Pastor Rick, the gift to the body of Christ uh, to encourage him. All of us in this life need to be encouraged. And I'd ask that you would bring a card and uh, to encourage our pastor. So I want him and his wife to come down and stand in front of the pulpit and face the audience. Now, I need somebody with um, a basket to come and stand. If you can give me a basket, somebody can come and stand. So what I want you to do is just get in the middle aisle and just come on down and get some love from your pastor. Come on. Well, you just stand where you are. Just come on and get some love from your pastor. Get in the middle aisle so we can have order. Uh, all right. No, just, just stand right side of them. Let them put it in the basket. Y'all get some love from them. Get a hug from them. Thank you, church. Thank you for the outpouring of love for your pastor. Pastor Ricks and Sister Ricks, to the world's greatest pastor of First Missionary Baptist Church, we love you. We hope that you find some encouragement in these cards and whatever else in these bags that will carry you along the way. You always tell us what to do. That's by the grace of God. And I love you, Rev. Sister Ricks, you know. All right. And we obeyed Pastor Stapleton by doing what he said, blessing our pastor. Amen. Give to the pastor. You may be seated. Thank you. Let me say uh, thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you all. 
Thank you, Pastor Stapleton. Bless you. I had no idea that he was going to do this because uh, y'all know how I am. Yeah. I was, but, you know, I, I really appreciate you. On behalf of me and my wife, we appreciate you so, so much, okay? Bless you. God bless you. I'm ready to hear some preaching now. Bless you. And he decided to buy his wife a gift. And he decided to buy her a candle. He took that candle home and gave it to his wife and says, when we cut the lights out tonight, this candle is going to shine. And when they cut the lights out, the candle did not shine. He went on to work, she took the candle and she saw some writing under the bottom of that candle that she could not enter. So she took it to uh, the community college language lab and they interpret what was on the bottom of the candle. She didn't say anything to her husband and when he came home that night, got ready for bed, she cut the lights off. And when she cut the lights off, the candle started shining. He wanted to know, how is it that this candle is shining? She said, I took it to the language lab, and they interpreted what was under the box. And it says that if you want this candle to shine, it got to sit all day in the sun so the candle can shine. Shine on me. Come on, help me. Oh, shine. On me, let from the lighthouse shine. Oh, 
Come on, help me. Shine. Hallelujah. Oh. with all your quickening power and touch these hearts of ours and may them always speak of you the less men shall see of us and the more that they will see of you have your way spirit of the living God fall now fresh upon us spirit of the living God fall now afresh upon us and we will be careful to give you the praise and give you the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. A few Sundays ago, I was in Talladega, Alabama preaching for one of my sons in the ministry's anniversary. Early that Sunday morning at 6.30 while I was in the hotel room, my phone rang. Pastor Reuben Sampson of Beaumont, Texas called my phone. And I returned his call he says to me, I did not call you. I said, but my phone rang. And these iPhones don't lie, you did call. <laughs> and he said, uh, it must have been an accident. But we went on and talked. And before I got off the phone, I asked him, do you know anybody that needs help? from the flood, and he gave me a name. And the last person I talked to Saturday night was Pastor Reginald Reed of Texcana, and we was talking about helping pastors that was in the flood. And we had prayer, and early that morning my phone rang. And he gave me this name. 
And I got off the phone and I called Pastor Reed with this name. He in turn called the brother, woke him up. And come to find out that this preacher was a member of his church when he was a young man. And not only that, but his brother is a deacon in the Poly Chapel Church. So I got on the phone and called Pastor Sampson and I called Pastor Reed and put us all on the phone again. And I said, now brother, that was the Lord that called me. And he called me with this name so you could be some assistance. And what I want to talk about tonight, it happened after prayer. Is there anybody here, some after prayer people here tonight? Uh, some of us have gone through, and the only reason we are standing tonight is that somebody prayed for us. Tell your neighbor it happened after prayer. The 16th chapter of Acts, then the 25th verse. Yes, At midnight, Paul and Silas sang and prayed, sang praises unto God. You haven't got a witness? At midnight. But at midnight, Paul and Silas was praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. But suddenly there was a great earthquake so the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone chain was loose. It happened after prayer. I said it happened after prayer. I, 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 I can say tonight your pastor is standing tonight because folk prayed for him. I wish I had a witness. I'm standing tonight because people prayed for me. You are standing tonight because somebody prayed for you. It happened after prayer. Prayer is very important. The devil is the only somebody that don't want you to pray. Because the weakest Christian is at his strongest point when he's down on his knees. Because when you pray, you're in touch with three worlds at the same time. Your prayers go up to God in worship. It goes out to man in work, and it goes down to Satan in warfare. So when you're praying, you're worshiping, working, and warring all at the same time. And the devil do not want you to pray. Prayer is in. Is there anybody here no prayers in Paul? Yes, the truth of the matter, when some of us didn't have sense enough to pray ourselves. And one of the problems in the modern day church, we won't try to pray like we've been holy all of our lives. But I got a, uh, got a news flash. You know and the Lord know you ain't been holy all your life. And when you didn't have sense enough to pray for yourself, somebody prayed for you. Somebody prayed you in. Some of us are still standing on our mama's prayer. But when I come to the text tonight, Paul and Silas in jail, not for murder, rape, or robbery, but they're in jail for doing the will of God. And any time you do the will of God, the devil's going to be after you. And I say all the time, if you go all day long and the devil never bothers you, maybe that's a sign y'all walking the same way. Because the devil will be on your trail. Paul and Silas are in jail. But if you watch the text, you do not see them mumbling, grumbling, or complaining. They're in jail. They're chained. They're in a inner jail. And their backs, their backs are bloody, yeah. but they are not mumbling, grumbling, or complaining. Well. They decided to call a prayer meeting. Yeah. Can I hear them tell you, you all not wait till you get in trouble to pray. Yeah. 
I say you ought not wait till you get in trouble to pray. You ought to be on speaking turn with God. I, can I pull the house and anybody talk to him this morning? When you woke up this morning, did you talk to the Lord? Did you tell the Lord, thank you for another night. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Prayer is important, y'all. It happened at prayer. I, I, I'm a witness that God will hear and answer prayer. When you're going through, brothers and sisters, you've got to have the right attitude. I say you have to have the right attitude when you're going through. When you have sickness in your body. You go to the doctor and he tell you you got cancer in your body. You, you, you can't just throw in the towel. You got to believe that God is a healer. I wish I had a word. When, when the doctor told me I had colon cancer. I didn't throw no pity part. I believe that God would answer prayer. I wish they had a witness. I said, I believe that God was a healer. Anybody here know that he is a healer? And the church started praying. Uh, they told me on my colon, uh, the cancer was about the size of a pecan. And we was praying. And, and when they went in, the doctor said it was so small, he couldn't even see it. Y'all ain't hearing me. And, and somebody wanted to know that it was the prayers of the saints. I wish I had somebody. If there ain't anybody here, no prayer will change things. You, 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 you know, we all have our down times. I was upbeat, but one day I got down. And by that time I got down, Pastor Devin Atchison called me and asked me how I was doing. I said, man, that, 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 that C word almost got me down. He said, man, there's another C. I wish I had a witness. You, you got to keep your eyes on another C. There's a Christ. I wish I had a witness for your crisis. I don't care what the doctor said. We got a doctor that's above that doctor and he can have cancer, diabetes, anything else. It will happen after prayer. Paul and Silas are praying, but they are positive. God is a positive God. Can I talk to somebody that's going through? The worst thing in the world when you're going through is be around negative folk. Come on. When you're going through, the worst thing in the world to be around negative people. And everybody come to church don't have faith in God. But when you're going through, you got to get with somebody who believes in the power of prayer. I don't care how dark it may be. You got to understand my condition is not my conclusion. If anybody here can testify, my condition is not my conclusion. When you look at me tonight, you're looking at a mirror. Paul and Silas pray in spite of what they're going through. When you pray, you've got to believe that he will answer. If there anybody here believe he will answer, somebody, somebody, they're in debt. you got to believe that God will bring you out of debt. Somebody here, your home is messed up. you got to believe God can turn it around. If there anybody here, no, God will answer prayer. Some of us are waiting on deliverance. But while you're waiting, you got to have faith to believe that God will bring you out. Do we pray prayers or do we say prayers? And when we pray, do we really believe 
that the God whom we praying to yes, will answer. Well, that was a church uh, was in the city and they moved outside of the city limits and they built this nice edifice. A couple of years later, since they had no restriction, a man came and built a nightclub. And it was like an adjoining parking lot. And the people couldn't go to church without picking up beer bottles, whiskey bottles. And somebody said, Pastor, we've got to do something about this. And they called the prayer meeting. And when they called that prayer meeting, they prayed and called on the Lord. And one night there was a storm. And the storm came. But moderator, the lightning flash. The lightning hit that nightclub and burned it to the ground. The owner of the nightclub sued the church. And in court, his defense was, it was the prayers of the saint that burned his nightclub down. But now listen, but the church defense was that it was not their prayer. The church defense was it was the act of nature. Well, the judge that was presiding over the case was scratching his head. He said, now, I'm confused. Well, here's a man, don't go to church, ain't saved. Don't believe in the Lord saying it was y'all prayer that burned his building down. Y'all wish they had it with me. And you all saying it was not y'all wish I wish they had something. Else. Either you believe in prayer or you don't. I wish they had a witness. He said, now didn't you pray for the God that you serve to do something? And when he act, you denied what y'all ain't hearing me. And that's the way it is. A whole lot of us, we are praying, but we don't believe God will act. When you pray, you got to believe he's a right now God. Oh, back, back, back in the day, Austin Buggy Day, uh, they had a drought. People got together and said that they were going to pray for rain, and they gathered out in the field. An old lady was on her buggy with some snuff in her mouth. She spit, got off the buggy, been a little nosy. She said, Sonny, what are they doing around here? She said, Granny, they praying for rain. And she started going back to her buggy. said, you're not going to help us pray for rain? She said, I don't believe a will. She said, why are you not going to help us? Pray for rain. You say y'all praying for rain, but it ain't an umbrella in the crowd. You, you, you've got to believe in prayer. I wish I had a witness here. I don't care what your condition may be tonight, you've got to believe that God is above your condition. If you believe God is above your condition, you ought to give us praise right now. You ought to give us a shout right now. You ought to be a hallelujah right now. Thank him in advance for your healing right now. Not only did they pray, but they praised. And can I tell you, prayer and praise go together. Sometimes you got to praise your way through. One of our problems is instead of us talking to God, we won't talk to everybody else. Whoever you calling on the phone, they got more problems than you have. But we ought to be able to call on God who's able to handle our problems. Yes, well, if the Lord told us tonight there's 168 hours in a week, okay. just bring me your prayer time.
time sheet from last week. All right, y'all bring it. Bring me your prayer time sheet, 168 hours in a week. He said, now, wait a minute, before you come, bring me your cell phone bill. And we're going to compare how many hours you talk to everybody else. I wish I had a witness here. And how many hours you talk to me. And everybody else you talk to, they couldn't solve your problem. But I heard Big Mama say, Jesus is on the main line. And all you got to do is call him up yeah, and tell him what you want. Get out of here. It happened after prayer. Jesus was a man to prayer. Everything he did, he prayed. Before he called in the disciples, he prayed. Before he fed that 5,000, he prayed. Before he called Lazarus for, he prayed. Now, if Jesus prayed, why is it you think you don't have to pray? Not only was there prayer in the text, but there was praise in the text. Prayer and praise go together. I tried to tell you last night, one of our problems, we allow the naysayers to keep us quiet. See, the devil don't want you to praise the Lord. He wants you to praise the cowboys. And some of us got more energy praising the cowboys than we do the Lord. Come on, talk to me. But, but every now and then, you got to learn how to praise your way through. If that anybody here know, you got to learn how to praise your way through. My, my, I had a member who had to have surgery. Both of her breasts were removed. And, 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 and I went to the hospital before she had surgery and she was all smile. Went back, she was still smiling. She got out of the hospital and went to visit her and rung the bell and there she was, smiling. And that was during the time I was going through with my cancer. And I had to ask her, why are you always smiling and so positive? She said, Pastor, you taught me. I got to learn how to praise my way through. I wish I had a witness. You, you, you taught me, don't throw no pity party, but throw a praise. I wish I had a witness. If there anybody here that's going through the night uh, want to help me throw a praise party, you got some bills you can't pay, uh, throw a praise party. Your body is sick, throw a praise party. We ought to lift up our hand and give God some praise and thank him for what he's about to do. Deliverance will come if you praise him. Anybody in this house looking for some deliverance tonight? You know, I discovered, brothers, one of our problem is when we come to church, we don't come expecting nothing. If we don't come expecting anything, you're not going to get anything. Old folks say, off from off leaves off. And when you come in here, you got to come believing that I'm not going to leave out here the same way I came. If that anybody here tonight, no God still answered prayer. If that anybody here tonight, no, whatever you're going through, he can heal you right where you sit. If that anybody here tonight, no, he can turn it around right where you are right now. Somebody ought to give him some prayer. Listen, the, the, the Marcus, where when he was a rookie with the cowboy, when you're a rookie, you know they always initiate you. And so the Marcus, where 
as a devout Christian. And he's always bragging on the Lord, talking about the power of God. So what they decided to do with him, they called him sleep. And they got him and took him out to the practice field and tied him on the goal post, the practice field. And they went back to their uh, dumb laughing and left the markers on the practice field tied to the goal post. And while he was tied, he was praying to the Lord. Lord, why you allow this to happen to me? I'm always witnessing for you. Why did you allow this to happen to me? Here I am out here after midnight on the practice field. And while he was talking to the Lord, it started to rain. And what they did, they tied him with duct tape around the goalpost. And while he was praying, it started to rain. And the rain got between the duct tape I wish I had it. and the goalpost. And, and he was able to free himself. Y'all ain't hear me. He was able to free himself. And it started thundering and lightning. And the guys got scared and said, we better go out there and get him because we're going to get in trouble. It's lightning out there. But when they got there, all they saw was duct tape. Y'all ain't hear me. All they saw was duct tape on the ground. And when they went, the markers would sleep like a baby in his mama's arms. They woke him up and said, man, how did you get free? He said, the same God I've been telling you. Y'all ain't hear me. The same God that I've been talking to you about, he's able to set me free. If there anybody in this house tonight that the God is able to set you free. Well, I'm out of here. Not only, not only, with their prayer, not only with their praise, but I see some power in the text. You see, if you really want God's power, you got to learn how to pray. And you got to learn how to praise Him. There's some stuff that modern medicine cannot cure. But I know God can. Uh, God don't allow anything to slip up on him. And so I need some after prayer people who know what God can do to help me just shout amen. I said I need some after prayer people who know what God can do to shout hallelujah. I need somebody tonight to say when you look at me, you are looking at a miracle. I don't deserve to be here, but because of God's power, I'm here tonight. I'm standing tonight. I'm standing on top of the ground, and the ground ain't on top of me. Ain't God all right? I don't know how you feel about it tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. But all I know is prayer does work. Is there anybody here can testify with me that prayer will turn things around? Is there anybody here tonight can testify with me prayer? We'll turn it around. Anybody here know prayer does work? 
I'm out of here. I'm so glad that somebody prayed for me. I'm so glad that God answered my prayer. When I was down, he picked me up. When I needed him, he came to my rescue. Ain't God all right? Is there anybody here can testify the Lord will make a way won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it he will he will make a way I don't know how you feel about it but I'm standing here tonight because God healed my body I'm standing here tonight because God is a healer and he all right i came all the way from dallas to lufton to let somebody know he's still in the healing business and he all right i said in the all right glory hallelujah i've had four major surgeries in less than three years i had the pollock on my throat i had colon cancer surgery i had hernia surgery and i had heart surgery but here i am here I am, I'm standing here to just tell you, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Ain't it all right? You know when I had a uh, pilot on my vocal cord, I wasn't able to talk. And the doctor told me, you can't do no hollering. You just whisper. Ain't it all right? And y'all know what I did? I got me a shout bottle huh? and when I would go preach I tell the people when I hold my bottle up I see that's your cue to shout for me ain't God all right I would hold my bottle up and tell them that's your cue to shout for me but can I tell you it's nothing like having the praise on the inside and you can't get it out and it all right I was in revival in the Denver Colorado on the 16th Street Mall and I asked the Lord Lord give me my voice back Lord I'm tired of going around here let somebody ask shout for me ain't it all right and I want to testify he did answer prayer ain't it all right and I'm so glad I don't have to ask nobody else to shout for me I've got no own shout and y'all got to excuse me ain't it all right oh He will make a way. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he? Yeah. he will. He will. He will. He'll do it. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Ain't he all right? Can you help me praise him? Can you help me pray? Can you help me pray? Somebody's going through. You don't know who you're sitting next to, but would you do me a favor and help me encourage somebody? Would you help me encourage somebody? Get somebody by the hand and tell them, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but I know God can answer prayer and let me shout for you. Come on, shout for your neighbor. Shout for your neighbor breakthrough. Shout for your neighbor turn around. He's turning around. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right?
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord tonight. It happened. After prayer. Amen. Amen. Bless his name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Invitation is now extended.